Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to another little analysis video. Um, I thought that the shock and the spark had a pretty interesting Hollywood point A, so I thought as the second kind of uh, point analysis that I would do, uh, I would tackle Hollywood point A and talk about uh, what I think of it, what are or, or what is important, some of the you know interesting strats that I think uh, specifically Spark actually pulls out on their defense, um, and how uh, Shock responds to it. So let's uh, let's dive into it, right? So obviously composition wise, not too uh, not too crazy here. Just a you know standard mirror match, Diva Scout. Always good to, to know what composition your team's running. Um, okay, let's see how this fight goes. Because if they didn't see the D.Va, that could be kind of interesting. So they scout high ground. They don't seem to have any idea where this D.Va is. And they dive. Okay. So let's back this up. Okay, look at this right here. I'm gonna mark this. I'm gonna back up again. Ah. You see how that's being absorbed? They know that they have a diva. Okay, let's just let's just start there. The shock know that there is a diva, but they don't see it. On this high ground, which most teams normally hold. They don't see the D.Va. They don't see the D.Va. They don't see the D.Va. And what do they do? They don't really do much of anything. I think the idea here for them is to rotate to Cafe. Um, which seems very um, not incredibly smart, um, if you ask me. Um, well, for the first issue is we don't know where the D.Va is, right? So issue number one. Diva, where is she? Where's Diva? Diva, where is she? We don't know. Um, if we don't know where somebody is, I feel like we need to take very safe routes, and it doesn't seem like this is a very safe route. You know, our, our cover is blown here, and we regain cover here. Up until that point, we're just free to take all kinds of poke damage. We lose shield, you know, priority. We are just... Um, just taking so much damage, and you can see that in the life lead. You know, look at Spark, look at look at the Lucio comparison, look at the Diva comparison. You're starting to see Brigitte. You know, they're they're taking a lot of chip damage here. Doesn't seem like they know exactly what they want to do, and I think this rotation is just incorrect. I don't think you go that way. There's a couple ways which I I think there are, are are pretty safe, right? So obviously, with Hollywood A, we have two very good high grounds to control. We have Cafe and your your normal high ground, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we have a point that kind of intersects the two of them. So the ideal here is to have control of one of the high grounds while also being able to contest the point. If you can do both of those, that puts the defenders on the back foot and they have to commit to either one of those things. They have to either meet you on the point to take a, a kind of a battle of attrition and start to, to burn resources to get you to get off the point. Or they give up their high ground. I guess you could argue that maybe you could leave your Zarya up here, much in the same way that um, you could leave your Zarya on Cafe or whatever one the attacking team controls. But it's not doing you any favors if we just don't take any of those and we run straight to the point. Doesn't make much sense, right? Um, so I think you could run along these back stairs and try to threaten the high ground up here. Most teams will probably match you, and you can start to have that, that war of attrition, especially on the neutral fight. Um, what do I mean by the neutral fight? So this is the first fight of the map where there is no clear advantage um, in terms of resources. There is an advantage um, for the defenders if they choose to take it, which is positional advantages, right? Um, we start to threaten that positional advantage if we take this rotation. Uh, if we take the long alley, I still think we take a lot of poke within this area. All in here. On that rotation through, we take a lot of poke, and it's something that Shock ends up doing, I think, on their third or fourth push, or the fourth uh, retake. They go through this way, and they actually um, don't properly 
sync up their movements. They don't actually move together or somebody is like straggling behind and they get picked, which obviously isn't isn't ideal, especially in, you know, the goat's mirror and how important each hero is. Or what, you know, Hangzhou have expertly positioned for is this back alley ray alleyway rotation so you can probably come into here for security wait for everybody to group up you know scout a little bit maybe poke here and there just to see exactly where everybody's positioned um i i much rather this roll out instead of this right we don't need to take all this poke if we if we position here with our diva or maybe our rhine peaking we can start to survey the high ground and say okay well i see the rhine i, I see the zen i see everybody but i'm not seeing diva where could she be okay um, but before we get into kind of like where, um, you know, information uh, surveillance, if you want to kind of call it that, it's kind of verbose, but just scouting, right? Um, why is this important? Why is this back alley rotation um, another kind of safe option? Well, if we can get through here, there's no chance of us taking damage. And it's a very short path from there to there. And we're already back in cover. They only can pressure us here, and that's enough time to either blanket yourself with defense matrix or just have your rind uh, stay a little bit behind and, and cover the, the rotation in. Now, obviously, the spark knows this, and they're, you know, positioning accordingly, very much in the same uh, vein that um, Horizon Lunar Colony point A is uh, kind of very similarly played, where you put your D.Va or your, perhaps even your Winston on the low ground uh, by the entrance of space, and if they want to rotate through space, you have somebody there to either, you know, slow them down or get some extra damage in before they get to do that. Maybe you can get a pick if you, you know, dislocate somebody, um, you know, farther enough away from the clump. But we, what we want to do is we want to come through this way and then we can easily take cafe control. Um, I don't think Spark was ever planning on meeting them if they come down. Um, with this positioning, however that well okay so let me rephrase that most teams if they hold up here are holding six on the high ground most teams aren't actually holding um not to my knowledge it's i think this is an interesting adaptation but we'll get into a couple more maybe i'm wrong um i don't think most teams are holding their diva here um so once you rotate in if you don't see the diva which is again what i want to get into with scouting um then you could start to change your mind, right? You, you you start to wonder, where's the diva? Maybe we don't want to go this way. Maybe we want to threaten here because we're quickly going to, you know, take a 5v6 on the high ground and then the diva has to come out. She has to boost back to her team, which again, you're starting to get a little bit more resource advantage. Just inherently of going this way, you already start to get resource advantage. But again, just to kind of just general... In a vacuum, taking this back alley gives you cafe control. That's why that's why we take it. It's very safe. It's a quick rotation, and we start to get the opposing high ground. But now, okay, getting into the scouting and getting in what I think uh, Shock could have done here, right? So taking security, we have this little doorway right here. This little guy right here. Um, we can peek through here. We can play a little bit passive. Maybe you have somebody in the choke. Maybe a Zen peeking to throw orbs. That's fine. But what we want to do is we want to see this high ground and say, okay, well, who do we see? We see the Zarya. We see the Brig. We know there's a D.Va because at the beginning of the match, we saw micro missiles over here. We saw a defense matrix absorbing some shots. So we know there's a D.Va. Where is she? Where is the D.Va? They peek out. They, they see the high ground. Where's the D.Va? No D.Va. Okay, well, I think that should be alarming it doesn't seem like shocker very alarmed at all and then again i think this push into here is just silly and to begin with i don't, I don't necessarily like that at all um to what i was saying before if you do scout this here um i'm i, I would guess i i would say i'm pretty partial to rotating back alley i think it uh, is the quickest way and it's the quickest way to control uh, one of the high grounds on hollywood a but if divas are um holding this position very often i could see maybe why that uh, might not be so uh sought out after a very valuable rotation spot but if that's the case that's fine um you can still peek here and scout if you don't see somebody okay that's a little strange we know there's a diva so we're not threatened by a sombra so why don't we just go this way instead 
you know, is there a diva here? I guess it's possible. Is there a diva here? I guess that's possible too, but I think at that point you'd probably see her as well. Um, so I think this rotation up through the stairs is probably your best bet. Um, because it eliminates all the positions that D.Va probably would be. Um, this is a spot I think D.Va could be at. If if we're hiding, a, a, you know, a, an incredibly mobile, you know, tank character, why are we doing that? Why are we hiding D.Va? Well, like I said, with Horizon Lunar Colony, we tend to hide the D.Va by space because she can dislodge you. So where are there places where we could dislodge people well again i think this is one of them because again if we rotate back alley she can push us out and create some sort of uh, pressure that you know the, the high ground clump can dive us on or, or you know attack us um she can hold here but it's very easily scoutable so i don't think that's necessarily um accurate she could be hiding back here for some reason um i don't see why that would be so that seems very strange um, I don't think this is anywhere you can hide. I don't think that's covered by map geometry. So it'd be very strange to hide up there. But for, for you know, for the sake of argument, let's say she's, you know, these are the, the options where she could be hiding. If we rotate back here, it's a little difficult to scout this. So instead of trying to scout this, let's just take this half of the map right here, right? Let's just take that side and leave alleyway you know, as a mystery. We don't know if somebody's there. That's fine. We can rotate up here. And if by chance Diva is here, she now has to retreat to her team, which again causes her to use an ability that she won't have for this next fight. But enough of the minor minutia of positioning here. Again, very coordinated. Nice, nice positioning here from, from Spark. I like this a lot. I'm kind of eager to see exactly what teams are running position, like uh, defensive wise on uh, other Hollywood, a defenses, because I don't think you see that all too often. And uh, yeah, I think teams are going to have to cover for it again. The big idea that what you want to do here is hold one of the two high grounds and then be able to contest cart. That's the ideal. They go back to the default. Now shock should be aware. Okay. We're not going to fall for that again. If we don't see the D.Va, we go left. She has to come back to her team. What do we do here, Shock? We go the same direction. I guess the idea there is like, okay, if D.Va is going to play in dark here, we can just speed on her discord stun and, and take her down, right? What they don't expect is for Rhea to be quick on the trigger with boosting outwards and kind of uh, slowing down that rotation. And we get a pin, counter pin, and now we're stuck. Something that I think super... It's something that Reinhardt's do in the league a little bit too much. Even uh, no smite here. These charges are very risky. Very high risk, high reward. Um, I don't even know if it's a, it's a high reward. I think um, getting the burst damage is, is nice, but it puts you at such a strange positional um, encounter that... At times, I, I really wonder if it's just high risk, like medium reward, where you're really not getting too much out of it that you wouldn't be able to if you just slow down and, and kind of just didn't charge. I don't think charge is all that good in, in the Goat's Mirror here. Again, shot goes low ground, and they get picked. Um, it's, it's just rotations. It, it's just, you know, being very tight on how you're rotating, who's where, what, you know, these are things that you can definitely run through in practice versus anybody. Um, maybe you're not punished, but this is something that I think coaches are pretty keen on and Spark just runs on them. Again, nice use of ultimates here where we're just only using Rally. Not the most high impact ultimate, but it definitely secures the fight for us, which is great for our economy. Now we're looking at, we're looking at B. We have, you know, four alts versus... Their three or four puts us kind of even, slight it lead with Rally, uh, but for the most part, you know, s slight edge to, to Shock in terms of resources there. Again, going back to default, they they continuously rotate back to default here. So what is Shock going to do? What's, what's the adaptation here? They're taking a ton of damage. They had to use armor pack there. Now we go up. Again, 
you start to see what I was talking about. You have to boost up. That's going to put that on cooldown. You can't use that here. Is it as useful as, you know, I'm making it out to be? No, but that's already, you know, a battle one. We're already starting to get an, a lead at least. Diva Bomb. Not entirely too sure exactly what's happening because it's the overhead VOD and I'm not I'm not too worried about uh, bubble cooldowns and management with uh, the overhead, but... Maybe in some next, maybe in some future VODs, I'll, I'll just pull up the game and, and see what I see. But I like this. I like the, the, top, the top down a lot more for big rotations and all that jazz. So this fight, coming in with Shatter, and that's about it. For Spark, we're going to have Rally. We probably build most of Grav this fight. These fights tend to be a little bit longer. And now we're going back to cafe. Let's see how much damage they take on the way there. I wasn't paying attention, sorry. <laughs> Spaced out. I don't even hate the, the beat engage here. Look at no smite. Holy. So Shock really isn't taking all that much damage here. Spark's actually taking a considerable amount. Hmm. Very strange from Rhea that that engage was very late. The beat I don't I don't really hate. Choyobin's just out in Alaska, not really finding much success. They collapse in on him, force him out, which forces resources into him to try and keep him in mech. Now this puts Shock in a great position, right? We have high ground pressure. We have point pressure. We're basically controlling two of the biggest parts of the map. We have map con we have partial map control and we have point control. Two things that I think are incredibly important on this point. We're starting to see we have to contest this. Forest is Hongjo to contest them. I think arguably you could have left your Zarya there, but holding this high ground in okay, so holding this position with Sparks Zarya makes it a little bit difficult to fight anybody basically in this position, like hiding or hugging the, the house here. It's very difficult to get an angle there. So you're basically just shooting the Ryan shield. So I, I understand why Godsby would want to drop. Um, I, I don't hate it either way, to be completely honest with you. If they could, if they keep high ground control and they just contest point like here, we just like put our dip our dip our big toe in and uh, contest with only only one person. Transfer last fight. It is what it is, and I think that's the round. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, so. Full holding should be pretty easy to uh, come back. Comps are pretty much the same. This should be fairly easy for Spark. So let's see what happens. So we already see, you know, nobody's here. We're not even really committing to the high ground. Our Zen's on low ground. Um, not too sure why. Um, you get a better sight line. It's a little bit safer, I suppose. Uh, versus maybe, no, I, I don't entirely know why we're back here with the Zen and why we're not on high ground. Um, for instance, if they were running Winston Goats, this would be kind of a uh, a rough position for them to, to kind of jump on the Zen. You know, it's, it's, it's not great for the Zen there. I don't think it's all that bad if you can get into this position as the attacking team and try to set up a dive on the Zen. Do they make a rotation? It's possible, but the brig has to come off high ground, and then you can take high ground control. You know what I mean? So I think putting the Zen up on the high ground, probably just a, a safer bet. Um, you still get the same angles. If anything, you get a better angle on this rotation. Um, it covers here. That's fine. It doesn't cover here. It doesn't cover here. Um, it covers this main choke, but I don't consider that a, a, a good rotation. So uh, I don't think that one matters as much. Yeah, Zen position is a little weird. Everybody else, eh, it's fine. I think Ryan should be on the high ground. I think Shock should just be holding high ground here. 
and they again you just give this up for free because you're not there you because everybody's you know on you have know, some people on the point you have some people not on the point you have some people on the high ground um yeah it, it, it just seems like we're just giving up free real estate as as a wise man once said so now we have you know check you know point one on the list complete we have a high ground so now we need to contest the point I think the Zen peak there from Bebe is a little bit, a little bit risky. But I guess if you see them here, they can't be speeding up. It's just a, a reaction thing. Rhea getting poked out. That's not good. You probably start to see shock rotate up here. So shock rotate up. Now the call for me as spark back down, take cafe, take cafe, contest point, keep contesting point, keep the pressure on them to have somebody contest with you. But just take this high ground. Send the Zarya up. Send the Brig up. Contest high ground. You don't need to take this fight. We can just take positions. Big boop. Could have found a pick there, but they didn't. So now we're all on the low ground. Not ideal. Now we're giving up space. We could have, we could have had this. All of this for free. Spark could have had all of that. But now we're here. You see how that's not uh, ideal. We don't we don't want to just give up all this space for free. Again, I'll reiterate this until a team gets it. We want this in this position. If we're going from uh, if we're going from here, we have high ground. They're contesting point. That makes us. Um, we have to. Oh, I'm sorry. Flipped it in my head. We have high ground. Now we have to contest the point. I think Rhea's job was probably to contest there. Got forced out. I don't think Rhea should be contesting with D.Va. If anything, he should probably be up here fighting from this angle. Put Ryan here to contest point, right? So you have, you've met all the conditions, and now it's completely up to Shock to deal with you in some way. Are they going to boost onto the Ryan? Okay, fine. The Diva's is going to shell the Ryan from an off angle. You're going to have the Zarya from the high ground shooting over the Ryan shield or even pressuring the Ryan to begin with. Um, once they boost up this way, once they commit and you don't see them here, if you don't see them here, they've only, they've either done one of two things. They've gone around or they've gone up the stairs. They can't go this way because we would have seen them, right? Uh, wrong button. There we go. <laughs> um, we, they couldn't have gone this way cause we would have seen them. Um, they couldn't have gone this way cause we would have seen them, uh, couldn't have gone that way again, would have seen the rotation. The only rotations that they could have done here is up and over or out and around, which only one of those really makes sense in this. So taking the fight here is aggressive. I think we can just take positional advantages and then force the fight. I don't think we need to be so eager to be aggressive. This is fine. Put your Zarya up here. Zarya here. Contest here. Maybe even contest here. So your Zarya is a little bit closer. You're, I still think that's seceding a lot of space, but look at how much. If we just pause the fight here and we just continue where the fight is now, we have all of this space that we can control. If there's any kind of positional error, we can pull the trigger on them and, and absolutely, you know, just just wreck them. But Spark just backs up and they they give up all the high ground. So now you're going to see Zarya from the from the shock take high ground. You're going to see Diva up here, and then they get to contest the point for free. So we've lost all the objectives. We don't. We haven't captured this because they can contest it. We haven't captured a high ground because you've just given that up, and they've kind of taken it from you, which is fine. But we have to take cafe, and if we give up cafe, then we might as well back out and go again. Try it. Try the try another engage because you're just going to get poked out here. I think. Shock lets them go up. Okay. They're a little bit poked. So again, I think shock probably should send somebody here instead of chasing them around. Keep, keep the point. You have the point captured, capture cafe and use that as leverage. Now they have to come to you. The attackers actually have to control the point at some point if they're going to win. But I think Shock are going to rotate up to kind of force them off again. They're going to play ring around their hosey. And to be fair, they actually had a life lead. Let's back that up and look at this life lead here. 
Look at this. Boom, 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 boom. Compare that to Shock. Massive life lead. I think they could have just chased this. Chase this up. Maybe try to find one or two with Super Zalt. A little bit difficult because it's in a corridor. Fair enough. But again, we're just taking... We're not taking a ton of free damage because God's be... I don't know what's wrong with him. Can't, can't hit a right click, but... Should be taking damage there. And we're just chasing them around. Now we've just given up point control. We take high ground, but Godsby should be up here. It's just this very strange rope-a-dope ring around the rosy that doesn't need to happen because we're starting to see Spark pull away with some, some point gain. They go back up on high ground. Spark's wasting a ton of time. And they don't seem to to have any any plan here. You can start to... This is, again, probably them thinking. What are we going to do? What's the play? So they boost down with Rally and, and try to, you know, trade Altair and, and Attrition. Good all. Strange that Choi doesn't try to burst Rhea there. You never want to have to bash into your team. That's never good. And this is coming up pretty well for Shock. Surprisingly enough. So let's look at the alts here, because this seems to be the issue. So we trance, that's fine. We always have beat for the grab. There's grab, we beat. Okay, cool. And they just damage you through it. You never want to have to trance here. Obviously, shock does, because they're on the back foot. They can't give up ticks, right? So they don't have a, a an opportunity to lose that fight. So yeah, was that trance super necessary? Yes, but I think we didn't have to get to the point where we needed to use it. And so much in the same way that I think Spark doesn't shouldn't have to be put in the position that they are to use it here. So we use it here. We shatter. We get one. Dive really deep. We get the charge. Again, look at look at how far we have to to dive in to get that. Is it actually that far? So Ryan's just on his own here. He kind of gets booped back. We're just so split. There's no protection here for the for the clump. Yeah, they have sound barrier, but again, it just gets bled through. Hmm. Again, I think Spark could have leveraged that, played it a little bit slower, and uh, come out ahead with a lot more uh, definitive of victory there. Well, not definitive of victory, but... That fight probably looks a lot differently. Sorry, I'm also kind of patting at my nose because I'm ill. That way, that's fine. Shock gives it up. Back up, take high ground. Again, they hide this way or they're hugging this side of the wall because it makes it very difficult for this high ground to pressure they don't have a great angle this way right um it's just gonna force them on point and i don't know where Choi's going that probably should have been a d mech Bebe probably discords and shoots him that's probably a d mech and they probably win this there again you start to see godsby wanting to take high ground there like he's he's floating this way Zen takes high ground. That's good. I think that's that's very intelligent. But I think Godsby can be up here. Um, what does this say that Godsby wants to be close to No Smite? There's... You can use your self-bubble a little bit more defensively um, and kind of team-minded and not so uh, based on just trying to get charged for yourself to do a little bit more damage. Ideally, what you can do is your Ryan can play just a tad bit more aggressive, if I'm understanding it correctly. 
And when he does take poke, instead of putting up his shield and wasting shield uh, health, your Zarya can actually step in front of you, pop self bubble, and actually tank and body block some damage for you. So um, this constant need to have gods be with no smite leads me to believe that they're very much um, investing their self bubbles into protecting no smite. And they're using that less for gods be to get charged and more for no smite to be able to be a little bit more aggressive. Because I honestly think we should take high ground and just be able to force damage here. Much in the same way that Sinatra, much in the same way that Philly Fusion do it quite often. Hopefully, um, I have one of the VODs for Philly, and they always, um, not to go off on a tangent, but they'll come up and around, take this fight. This forces the defending team down to contest Cart. They put Carpe down with the Rhine. Carpe rotates over and boops up here and takes high ground here. So we have... Phillies, Zen, their Rhine, their Zarya, Diva, Brig, Lucio, you know, they have all of this space. And I think that's really intelligent. What that, or how different that is, is that's very much a damage centric composition. So we're looking for damage on the high ground from the Zarya and less protection, the same way that Godsby and No Smite are kind of running this. Uh, just my observation. It seems like they're relying on Rhea to do the damage. Maybe Rhea and Bazzi, because Bazzi tends to be a little bit more aggressive than um, some other Brigitte's. And it looks like they're going to hold. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Very interesting. All right, let's see. Last fight. Last fight, we're coming in. Grav to spark, rallies even, shatter to shock, bomb to shock. So we can look for a bomb shatter mid-fight maybe. Um, support alts are pretty even. Um, obviously we have a trains for spark probably mid-fight and we'll probably have beat fairly early for shock. Which again, kind of evens out. They'll probably get uh, all of them at some point. Goats tends to be slow. Holy IDK. Don't know what you're doing up there, my friend. That's just a throw with both hands. You see the brig. There's no sense. So, I don't... I guess the idea is that you're going to boop them off high ground, but you see the brig there. If it wasn't brig there and brig was with the Rhine, with super, I think this plays fine. Uh, maybe he's looking to boop them this way into the team, getting picks there. I think that's intelligent. But the Brig threatens this and covers this option so heavily and for this reason. If you get a little too greedy, you just get bashed and you get killed. It doesn't even actually seem like he did get bashed. It looks like Violet just solos him, um, which is pretty godlike. But uh, I don't think you can do that either way uh, versus a lower tier team. I think the Brig bashes you and you just die and you're down a player. And now it's just Scramble City. Everybody's pressing Q. Doesn't really matter at this point, I don't think. Yeah, Rhea's dead. Why are we going in here, Rhea? Why don't we take high ground, bud? Look at this rotation here. We go low ground because this placard would be bigger if he was high ground. We go low and we just sit here. If we go high... There's not a lot of people that can contest us here. The Rhine can't swing at us. The Brig can't hit us. The Diva can probably tick us, tickle us a little bit, but she'll probably match us. The Zarya can definitely beam you. That's that's your biggest threat. And we're already down healing. Not a not a great look. And solo grav. And that's the that's the map. That's pretty much it. Um not not super impressed by either team to be completely honest with you um i liked i liked this from spark i thought this coverage was interesting um i think teams are going to be very keen on that in the future and they're going to have to check for it because it does it, it definitely does throw you off your game and it seems like it definitely caught shock off guard that's uh where they were investing their diva didn't seem like they had that covered, and I know that Krusty and Moth both uh, work quite extensively on um, positioning and, and macro strategy, and Moth is kind of this uh, uh, sponge in that sense and kind of can relay it to the team very well in the match. So I, I know for a fact that they actually prepare very, very well. 
I just don't think they were prepared for that strategy. Um, and then with with Spark, um, I am going to be paying more attention to uh, how and where they position Godsby because, again, I feel like it's very defensively minded for, for No Smite to allow him to be a little bit more aggressive with Bazzy. That's where they're probably finding a lot of their damage. Uh, along with Rhea playing the off angles, which he tends to do quite often, but that's kind of Diva's job in this composition. Um, but yeah, not not a not a great understanding of of Hollywood A. I think again, controlling high grounds, forcing point, forcing a contest from the defensive team, um, and and forcing them off of their high ground, right? Or even being able to be, being able to hold both high grounds puts you at a you know a crazy good advantage. Um, but yeah. Um, kind of messy from both teams, to be honest with you. Um, kind of was expecting more, uh, from specifically shock sparks, been on the downturn, but, uh, yeah, I think we've gone on long enough. Uh, thanks for listening to, uh, Hollywood a, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, let me know if there's a match you want me to cover and, and take a look at, or if there's a point that you're not super familiar with and I'll, uh, take a look, but thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.